Hey guys, it's Stacy here. Welcome to my channel, Life is a Project, where I like to share my everyday life projects with you. So today is another fun, crafty Christmas a DIY using these two Dollar Tree wall art pieces. So these two pieces are actually wall art meant to be used as is. You can see they have the sayings on them that I'm really not a fan of. So I wanted to give them a makeover and turn them into beautiful Christmas decor pieces that I'll be able to use year after year. Now these are not picture frames, so the glass is not removable. It's actually glued to the frame. Now I didn't try it, but I may have been able to scrape off the lettering using one of those scraper blades that you can use to scrape off paint from glass and things like that. I'm just going to cover the whole thing. It's much easier. I don't have to wait for the paint to dry or I don't have to worry about, you know, masking off the frame to protect it from getting paint on it. So I'm just using some of my Mod Podge, which is a glue, a sealer, and finish, applying an even thin coat using my paintbrush making sure to get into the corners and I'm just going to add on this craft paper in the buffalo check pattern that I purchased from Hobby Lobby that I just had kind of left over in my craft stash. I just cut it to fit 7 inches by 7 inches. I think these frames are about 8 inches by 8 inches. Now you can smooth out the surface with your fingers, with your hand, but it works so much better to use a scraper. This one is by Cricut that I've had for many years. So I'm just going to kind of get into those corners, go right up to the edge, and it does make for a wrinkle and bubble free finish. So I'm loving the way this is looking so far. Now you can see that on the edges here, you can see daylight through to the other side. Now that is because where these are Dollar Tree, you know, pieces, they are not perfectly square. So I think that I can go on the back, add some black paint to the edges, just kind of fill that in so you won't be able to see it. So next I have some of these garland ties or pine stems from the Dollar Tree. You can see these are much fuller. Now I also have some from Hobby Lobby. Now they are a much better quality, but they are a little more slim, not as full. You can see them side by side. Now I just love the ones from Hobby Lobby because they hold together the ones from the Dollar Tree. Those pine needles, they really fall out so easily making a mess, but both will work for this project. Now you can see I'm just taking two of these garland ties and just twisting them together from end to end. I've done that twice because I want to form a wreath and a larger circle. Um, so I'm just going to use two of them here and just twist those ends together and form my wreath. So once I get it formed into the size and the shape that I like, I'll go ahead and just add some hot glue to the top, to the bottom, and then I can just center it on the piece and just press it into place. So I've had these bells that I purchased from Hobby Lobby for 50% off. I've had them for a while in my craft stash and I just have not been able to find a use for them in a project. They're quite large and so you can see here and they're kind of dark brown that I think don't look that great with the black just kind of too dark and too large. So I think these smaller white bells that are distressed look a little better. So I think I'll use these. So just using some jute twine here, I'm just going to string up these bells and then just hot glue them into place on the top center of the wreath just using some hot glue and you can see I did hang them separately. I tried at first to put them on one piece of twine but they just did not hang correctly and I did kind of stagger the hanging so that they hang at different lengths. Now I'm loving the look of the bells. I'm loving the way this is all coming together. Now all I've done is take in a pair of scissors, cut off that excess twine. So now I think it's time to dress up this cute little wreath with a beautiful bow. 
So I think I'll make a couple of bows. The first one using this buffalo check ribbon that I have left over from past projects. And I purchased it from Hobby Lobby, absolutely love it. And then I also have some of this jute twine that I'll make a bow with as well. Now I've just made this simple bow and I've showed you tutorials in the past using my Bowdabra. You can check those out also in past project videos, but there's so many ways to make a bow. You don't have to use a bow maker. So I'm just going to go ahead and just hot glue that into place. I think that looks super cute. Now it's so easy to make a multi-loop bow using a piece of twine. I just take it and wrap it around two of my fingers. Now if you want a smaller bow, you wrap it around fingers that are closer together. I want a larger bow, so I will wrap it around and you just wrap it around until uh, you get the amount of loops that you like. The two end pieces become the tail and then you just take a piece of twine and tie it in the center. Now I'm loving this bow, but I do want to kind of hide that center and maybe bring in more of the twine. So I thought about just kind of adding this bow to the center and it looks cute, but I'm really not liking it as much as I thought. It really does stick up too far off the piece. It's probably hard to tell that in this video. So I think I'll just add a center loop to my bow. Now I normally do that when I make my bow, but since I didn't, it's just simply just taking a small piece of ribbon and just hot gluing it together and just kind of squishing it together in the back and just hot gluing that into place so you can see here I've hidden the center and you cannot tell that it's just not one piece so guys I think this piece is finished I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the second one now on the second piece, I do want to make it different, but do it similar so that they can be displayed together and they kind of match and go together. Now you can see here, I wanted to use the things that I already had and this paper that I just love the print and wanted to use, it just wasn't big enough to fit the entire piece. So I did kind of piece it together. And once I did, I was not loving it. You could really see the imperfections. And so I thought about just distressing it using some of this elephant chalk paint by Waverly and I'm loving the color I just use a dry brush technique I just kind of paint it on well the more that I do it just really brings out those lines and the imperfections even more and the more that I apply I'm just not loving the way that it looks I feel like I put too much on so I think I'm gonna just start fresh now I can just easily cover this up using some more paper. Now I wish I had some of the thicker cardstock paper in solid white on hand, but I don't. So I'm just using a thin printer paper. Now that may show some of the imperfections through it, but I think it'll look better uh, than having a sheet that I am piecing together. So I'm just going to use my ruler here. This is a seven inch ruler fits perfectly and using a black pen with a fine tip and just make some lines because I really love the look of the lines that that craft paper had that I used first. Now because I did really like the way that this elephant paint looked dry brushed on that kind of distressed look, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. And as I start to apply it, I do see that it does start showing some of the lines through. So I just try to be really careful and just not only go vertically, but horizontally as well. And I just kind of start dabbing it on into place and I just keep working with it till I get it the way that I like it. Now I'm loving the way this is looking. You can see some of the lines, but some of this will be covered. And I just really think it looks like an old piece of kind of barn wood. So I'm really liking it. So now I want to bring some of that buffalo check pattern in so that it matches the other piece. So you can see here just using a scrap piece, I just used my printer and computer, found a stocking kind of silhouette or you know outline that I liked and I'll just cut that out and use it on the center of this piece. So I'm loving the way this looks. Now I do like the outline of the black. If you don't like that you could cut inside the line. Now I'm just going to center this up not put it flat kind of more on an angle just like it's kind of hanging from you know your fireplace 
And you know what is so fun about this? You can really just use any shape you like. You can do a star, you can do a heart, a gingerbread man, just so many different ideas. I'm just gonna use some more Mod Podge Add it to the back here, making sure that I go all the way to the edge so the edges don't peel up because I'm not going to add it to my uh, surface. I'm just going to add it to the back of the paper. And then I'm just going to kind of press it into place and then once again use my Cricut scraper to make sure there's no lumps and bumps and bubbles and that everything is just nice and smooth and looking good. So I'm loving this cute stocking. I just think it's so simple, but it really does look so good with the buffalo check print. So now I wanna bring in some of that twine so it matches back to that other piece. So I'm just gonna use that bow that I just previously made, add a little hot glue to the center, and then just add it to my stocking. And I am loving the way that this turned out. I think it looks really cute. And sometimes I think less is more. I may just leave it plain like this. Now if you're giving this project a try and this looks a little too plain for you, you can always add in some greenery. Also some beautiful red berries would be nice. You can also add another bell uh, to hang from that twine bow. And you can also add another buffalo check bow as well. To me, I'm more of one of those that like things less cluttered up and more clean and neat. So guys, here they are finished, and I think they turned out super cute. That cozy, comfy Christmas with the buffalo check, that farmhouse feel with the distressing and the twine. I love them, and I have $2 total in these pieces, you know, not counting just craft supplies that I had left over in my craft stash that I just kind of reused what was just kind of left over from past projects. And it's just so fun to take pieces that you can find at Dollar Tree or in the clearance section at Hobby Lobby that are all framed up really nicely and you can just kind of change them up and make them to fit your decor, to fit your style. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you give this project a try. I hope you are doing some fun Christmas crafting projects. I hope you are having a very Merry Christmas. I hope you will subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram as well as Pinterest. I thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye